Indiana University East School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Dimensional analysis as a problem solving technique. So we know that the final answer must have appropriate units in a given problem. Any problem. And in many problems, we can use conversion factors to us get to the correct units and hence solve the problem. And this can be ca the case even if we are not doing actual conversions from one unit to another. So for example, if a flight ticket costs $350, We can more loosely say that one $350 corresponds to one ticket. And so, depending on what we want to do, we can write this. Or this as a conversion factor and use either of these for solving problems involving this particular quantity. And this is what the power of dimensional analysis comes from, is it's not just for converting from unit A to unit B for the same thing. It is also for just converting between different uh, things that are essentially related. And essentially, we're using the conversion factor to state a relationship. So for example, if your local donut shop sells donuts for four forty-nine a dozen, and you want three dozen donuts, how much would it cost? Well, the cost would be in dollars. So here, I have three dozen. And I want to go from dozen to dollars. And like last time, for every dozen, we know that it is 449. And so, in this particular case, cost would therefore be thirteen point five dollars to three significant figures. Of course I've treated it as in terms of significant figures and it would be thirteen forty seven as a matter of fact since this is exact. We can use this to solve other types of problems. Here, I'm looking for the time it takes in seconds to reach home plate. And again, as we did with unit conversions, we pick something that's related to the amount that's not in a fraction. So we know it's 60.5 feet. Now, I know that I know the number of miles an hour. So I need to get the feet to miles first. Okay, and we know that one... We know that one mile is 5,280 feet. And so, and then we, we know that the fastball moves at 90.0 miles per one hour. So here, even though this is not actually a unit conversion, we know that this is not a unit conversion, we can use this as a conversion, set this up as a conversion factor. And finally, because I know that's how many hours I have, I know that there are 3,600 seconds per hour, and I get 0 0.458 seconds as my answer. One thing you've done before are problems involving density. And we can use density as the definition of density and manipulate this in a way that makes us able to do it in terms of dimension analysis. So here, the volume is in milliliters. And I have 50.0 grams of ether. And I know that I want to get rid of grams and density has units of grams per milliliter, so milliliters goes on top. So 0 0.71 grams at the bottom, 1 milliliter at the top, 
I get 7.0 times 10 to the 1 milliliter. That's my answer. This type of problem takes practice and I strongly urge you to do as much practice as possible involving these types of situations.